So here we go. I'm going to present the ultimate beginner's guide to Cyberpunk 2.0 and show all the changes that they made between the previous couple of years worth of gaming up until now where 2.0 changed everything. So let's get started. So I highly suggest you start a new game because if you're just transferring over a high level character already you're not going to feel the full effects of all the changes they made. So I put four points into each category and then dump the other two points into whatever you want to do. I'm using technical ability, but you could use intelligence if you wanted to do quick hacking or reflexes, whatever. And I'm going to show you why you want to do four. If you do three, you're not going to be able to access the perk points at the bottom, which is rookie level. And then there's pro level, phenom, and legendary. You're going to have to put nine attribute points in before you can get any of the perks in the pro level. So you can change the difficulty level at any time to very hard, but I start off the game at normal because it's very difficult to get through the first scene. So they changed the uncommon white, common green, uh, rare blue to tier 1, tier 1 plus, tier 2 green, tier 2 plus, tier 3 blue, tier 3 plus, etc. So at the beginning you have $449 and you picked up some clothes and some guns but very few. So they made a huge change in 2.0 so that guns that are level 1 will always have the same stat. Even if you go up 10 levels they won't do any more damage. So the only way to get more damage is to get a higher tier gun. So a green gun or blue gun or purple gun. So at the top you want to go to inventory and then go to crafting and you can see that you can upgrade but you can only upgrade iconic weapons. You can't upgrade guns you pick up off the street or got buy at the gun store. If you join GOG online, you get a gift of Black Unicorn Katana. So I can only upgrade the Black Unicorn and the Dying Knight, which are both iconic weapons. So I upgraded the Black Unicorn from 34 damage to 64 damage, but it's going to take a ton of components. So here I am after finishing the Sandra Dorset mission in Fee's apartment talking to Jackie and I'm going to go sell everything I have so I can get some money. None of the clothes do anything for you other than outer torso which can give you armor from 5 to 20 depending on the tier level, some face like the glasses which can give you chemical resistance. I'm doing this to get about $2,000 so I can buy components. So here I am at level 2 in V's apartment, haven't even met Jackie yet. I'm just going up to the wardrobe and showing how to just change the way you look. The only uh, options you're going to have are items that you've picked up. So your items that you pick up is going to increase drastically while you're out in the world. So as soon as I'm done seeing Vic at level 2, I'm going to go to this junk seller. And as long as I have 2 grand, I can the buy at least 10 junk I items. Because I, I want to replicate the crap out of these things. So I need something with at least, you know, more than 3. But 10 would be good. So I'm going to fast travel back to V's apartment. Go to the drop box outside. But before I start replicating it, I'm going to disassemble everything except for the multiple of 10. Then I'm going to step up to the drop box and I'm going to go to the, my junk items, press the G button to sell all, take the full amount, decrease it by one, and then press the F to sell and then the F again. And now my amount has doubled and I'm going to take those back and I just do that over and over until I have, look at the, what the sell price is and if the sell price is uh, going to be close to what if it glitches out and it, you don't have enough money to buy it back, you can go back to a previous save to correct it. If you don't have more money than the Dropbox has, just stop at about 2000 and disassemble them after you stepped away from the Dropbox and go back and start over. So I disassembled all the whites and crafted green components and with 362 I was able to craft enough Sitaras to sell for almost $20,000. As you level up, the drop box will go from 20,000 to 320,000. You have to be at a Rippers to upgrade the cyberware. So on the left side there, you can see at level 32, you have a max of 32 cyberware points that you can put cyberware in till it reaches 32. All cyberware will become much more powerful as you upgrade it. So since you have unlimited crafting components, you can upgrade everything to tier 5, which is legendary. In the beginning, I only buy really low cyber point 
items in cyberware. So if they're like five, six, seven, eight, then that's fine. But if you're looking at something that's higher than that, it's going to be a problem. I want to upgrade my cyber deck to as high as I can get it because it's going to increase the RAM and the buffer slots. And the buffer slots are going to be needed to get more components when you're hacking terminals. At level 10, you can get the biotech cyber deck instead of the militech cyber deck and it does better damage in my opinion. Next up at level 3 I go down to the docks and meet the monk there and get the mission and I can get the Fenrir which is an iconic SMG and is a total beast. Now I'm going to show the Fenrir in action with a ballistics coprocessor that's legendary and the muzzle brake that increases ricochet because I'm going to be using ricochet. After I get the Fenrir at level 3, I put it on very hard difficulty because it's not a problem after that. I'm going to show how I use the Gorilla Arms. The Gorilla Arms are weaker than the Katana for taking out people, so I'm going to hit them with Contagion first to weaken them, run over, and then punch them out with the Gorilla Arms, and it, you know, it works. The Gorilla Arms and Legs are available at level 10, and I put them on because they help open doors, which the, which the level requirements have gone way up in 2.0. And some things are still hilarious. If you go to the character at the top section, where you're adding perk points, and go to the lower right side, you can click on Progression Rewards, and this screen will come up, and it's showing you what each of the progression rewards you're going to get for upgrading your gameplay, basically. So to get Headhunter, you need to use Stealth, like Cool used to be. So takedowns from the rear, silenced headshots, etc. Netrunner's using the cyber deck and the mono wire. Shinobi is using blades. Or Solo is using the shotguns and gorilla arms and blunt melee weapons and engineers for crafting items and using grenades and tech weapons. The bonuses you can get are going to be as good as taking perks or cyberware or upgrading your gun. So look at what the bonuses are going to be and work towards getting those. So here we're going to talk about cyberware. And with cyberware at level 9 here, I can still buy them at white and they're relatively cheap. You know, you're going to spend 8000 to buy a white one and then upgrade it for free with components. Whereas if you wait till later, like at level 30 and you're buying a legendary, it's going to cost maybe $80,000 or $100,000. So I buy all the cyberware that I'm interested in putting on later and I don't have the ability to put on now because my max CP points are still too low. At level 9 here, I have to wait one more level to level 10 to be able to put in arms and double jump legs. Legs and arms become available at level 10. And if I want to put something in that exceeds the level that I'm av is available to me, I can uninstall it just by clicking on it, and that removes it. In the early game, when the CP limit is low, that's on the left there, I have a max of 71, I use stuff that has 5, 8, 10, 12 cyberware points to it. And I buy the stuff that has high points and install it later. And while having high armor level is nice, it doesn't reduce the incoming damage that much, and I tend to want to spend my uh, perk points in body and tech that have areas where it increases your health capacity. So now I'm going to show at level 11 what my cyberware looks like. I'm limited to 69 cyberware points, so I can't put everything in, but I've bought all the cyberware that I'm going to use in the future already. I just have to upgrade it when I have more points available and install it. It's eight cyberware points for the legs and the arms each. So here at level 23, I'm on very hard difficulty using the Biako uh, Katana that's a gift from Mokako. And I'm going to take these uh, 76ers on. I'm using the Dynalar Sandavista, and you can get it level 20. I can't use the uh, Militech Falcon that you get at level 30 or the Apogee that you get at level 40, which are much, much better. Give me a sec! Yeah. Ugh. 
Here you can see the sandy slowing time by 50%, but the bullets are kind of going by you because I moved out of his way and he didn't adjust to it. Now in this eventual five-star police encounter, what I'm doing is taking on basically the, all the cops as they keep on coming and there's huge amounts of them to be sure. I'm at level 33, I'm using a Militech Falcon Sand Abyssin, and it's not as good as the Apogee, but it, it's working here. You tend to run out of stamina pretty quick and the sandy goes down, but it gets a 10% recharge every time you kill somebody. So you can see it pop back up with every kill, but I'm getting my stamina boosted back up so I can go in there and swing quick, and then if I get behind cover for a few seconds, it'll just go back to being full. The level of the sandy goes up and down. It's that little left uh, bar down next to the grenade thing. I actually didn't have a health booster mounted at the time. Here I'm like four blocks away, but they're still sending in truckloads. This is a Militech APV. I'm just taking these guys out. Of course, more cops are going to show up in a second. The electrical flash is the shock and awe I have going on. <laughs> And the air dash is going to save me here because I certainly don't have time to call for a vehicle. Max Tech did show up, but you can see the five stars are going to go away really quickly. For all those that say the gut shotgun or any shotgun is worthwhile, here it is. Five shots in this guy with the Sandy on, and he's still living through it, and this is at close range. And he's a, he's a Sandy distributor, and he's healthy up. Getting killed. I also did it with the legendary Satara, same result. Whereas the Fenrir SMG is just going to rock this guy's world and I'm going to get him down without much of a problem. Neither the shotguns nor the Fenrir SMG have any perks into reflexes and body that would increase their damage. And while it does its best work with Ricochet on, it has very little recoil and you can get straight on headshots with it pretty easily. I had no trouble finishing this Tino NCPD mission two times in a row without dying with the Fenrir. The next thing I want to discuss is game saves. If you do a game save from the settings panel, you make a new save, it lasts forever. On the computer you can hit F5 and it'll do a quick save, and quick saves will last about 10 levels and then they'll disappear. And the last thing is, if you go to a drop box and sell one item, it'll do an auto-save. So after you finish something, just sell one item and it'll auto-save, and then you won't have to go back further than that. You're going to be limited by the number of perk points you get. You get a perk point for each level, so if you get it to level 50, that's 50. And then you get 10 out in the world, and you can get 10 in progression rewards. But you're never going to be able to really fully populate your perk points for anything more than one general build, maybe a second. Like if you have high reflexes, you could do blades and assault rifles slash SMGs. So have fun playing Cyberpunk 2.0, and thank you for watching.